This is Travis Stevens with Direct Pivot Parts. Today we're going to be changing over an Interco radiant tube heater burner box from natural gas to LP propane. First thing we do is we got our burner box here before it's installed. We need to take off the side cover with the two 516 headed screws in it. To do that, I always flip it on its side. I use a 516 gun and I remove the two screws and the cover from the heater. From there, inside the heater, we have a gas valve, which is located right here. Inside the gas valve, we will remove the flathead shiny screw down inside there and replace the spring that comes inside the kit, which comes with the unit. Inside the kit, there'll be an orifice, a spring, a new cover, and stickers to mark that it's been converted over to propane. First off, we will remove the silver-headed, flat-headed screw inside there. We take that screw off, and inside there, there's a little black flat-headed star-shaped plug, and we have to remove that too. For that, I usually use a longer flat-headed screwdriver, and we back it out all the way. And the easiest way to get all this out, I usually just dump it. And inside there, there's usually a, a spring that, there is a spring that we have to remove. I usually reach in there with a pick, and I remove it. From that point, we grab the other spring that came in the kit. It's usually red, and we place it inside the hole that we just took that one out of. And it is a tight fit, but you wanna make sure that thing gets down there straight. After that, you take your, your black flat-headed uh, plug, and we put that back in, and we screw it in 11 full turns. And that the, it can be tough to line up, because if you got bigger fingers, it don't line up the best. Once you get it started, we will turn it all the way until it bottoms out. Then I back it out four full turns. Four. After that, we need to change out our orifice, which is in our end plug down here. If you look down inside there, you can see an orifice inside there. Once you see the orifice down in there, it's a half inch shallow socket and I usually take a little bit of plumber's putty and I stick it down inside my socket so, it, so our orifices do stick. You wanna make sure you don't put so much inside of it that it uh, will plug your orifice. You're just making your, shop, your socket shallower. And when you go into there, you can see there is a hot surface igniter. Before you do this, you want to loosen uh, take out your flame sensor and your hot surface igniter so you don't crack it. That hot surface igniter is very fragile. And how you do that is you come up to the top side. We pull the wire off our flame sensor. Remove the quarter inch screw from the top. We can pull that off to the side. And then we have a Phillips headed screw. Okay, then before we change our orifice, we always loosen this Phillips headed screw inside of here. I usually take it completely out just cause this is the most fragile part. It is a hot surface igniter. It is ceramic. So we don't want to touch it with our fingers or even hit it on anything. Set it off to the side. I get my half inch extension. I look straight down in there and I can see my, my orifice in reverse. Take that orifice out. If you do drop it, you can reach your hand in through this, through the end of this and get it out. Right there's our orifice. As you can see, the hole is way bigger for natural gas. For propane, it's usually smaller. We put that inside there lightly. Start it very slowly not to cross thread it. 
Once it's in there, we just give it a little snug. Nothing, nothing to break it or anything like that. And then we reinstall our hot surface igniter. And I usually keep the wires pulled somewhat tight so it keeps it in position. And this does not have to be extremely tight, just snug. Then we reinstall our flame sensor and plug the wire back into the top of it. And then after that, we have a plug on this side of the gas valve on the outgoing side. It's an Allen screw. Take our Allen wrench, put this inside there. This will be the last step once it's hung to get it assembled. On propane, you'll set your water column to around 11.5 PSI. And how we do that is we'll unscrew this we will get our water column measuring gauge. I have an adapter here built. It screws into there. And then once the unit's up and fired and running, we insert our, our adapter and we want our water, water column to go up to 11.5. If it's low, we screw in our plug that we put in over there all the way. And if, it, if it's high, we back it out. If it's too low and you have it screwed all the way in, you're gonna to have to go outside and adjust your propane regulator. But once all that's done, they give you a new black plug to replace the silver one, which indicates now it's an LP, and you put the O-ring, which was included in the kit in it. And this can be a little tricky, because this is tough to get down in there. It will go in the place of that plug right there. And most time how I do that is I slip it down there with my fingers, and then we use a screwdriver to finish that off. If you are doing this horizontally, it can be a son of a gun. Once you're done with that, your unit will be running at 11.5 PSI. You'll take out the plug with the gas off and reinstall the plug you took out. Inside your kit, it came with stickers that says, Attention, this valve has been converted to uh, LP. We put one on our gas valve, let anyone know who services it. It is a propane. And then they gave you a new nameplate for it cover, which you will put over the existing natural gas one. Then you put back on your cover and you have successfully installed an LP kit and set into an Ernco Heat Star radiant tube heater. You guys have any questions, feel free to call, email, or check out our website. <laughs>